All right, boys, girls, ladies and gentlemen, today we are going to do a quick project here in Gravit Designer. We're using Gravit in place of Illustrator because we're working in class and out of class. It is a vector-based program, okay? This tutorial will probably go a little fast. Remember, it's a video. You can always pause and restart it, okay, and move back to where you know what's going on. So today, we are going to build this cheeseburger that we got in here, or hamburger here, and we're just going to build it with shapes, okay? If you want to think about Gravit Designer as a uh, program or illustrator that deals with vectors which are shapes and which manipulate shapes um, and puts them on layers. So it's going to seem real similar in some ways to uh, Photoshop which we did last year in Digital Art 1 um, but uh, this is going to deal a little bit different. Okay so first right over here we have our layers palette just like we had layers in Photoshop we got layers and you can select things in your Thing and you see it will highlight those different layers. That's the rectangle. You can double click on them and rename them. So if I type that type burger, it'll rename that rectangle as burger and so on. Your toolbar is actually up here. So everything's here. It's just moved around a little bit in different places. Okay. You still have the zoom tool, which is right here. So you can click and just zoom in. You have your control zero or command zero, which also puts everything back into perspective. And then you've got your hand tool for when you go in and then you can move those things around. And that is the same as your keyboard, uh, your space bar, just like it always is. Okay. Just like in Photoshop, when you hold over top of a tool, it'll give you the name of the tool. It'll give you what the actual, uh, it's called so right here I have our selection tools and our main tool is the pointer tool so which is V it moves things around just like in Photoshop where our move tool move things around and then we also have this other one a sub select tool okay now the difference between the main pointer and the sub select tool so you watch here when I click this is with selected with the main pointer and when I click on here I can select individual parts of a piece or a vector that I'm grabbing. Okay, I can even affect certain the straight walls and bend them and curve them. Okay, over here we have a shapes panel. We have a variety of shapes. We can make line, rectangles, ellipses, polygons, triangles, and stars. We've got the pen tool. We're not going to talk too much about the pen tool in this particular lesson. Then I've got the knife tool. Um, knife tool is obviously we're cutting and that's in the same thing and there's freehand shaping we have a typography tool and then we can place images okay we also have some different tools these are kind of like the options for whatever's in your board you also have your uh, properties panel appearances over here once I get mr. G out of the way right over here whatever shape we have so like if I pick this red shape right here over here, it'll tell some of the properties. This tells the position where it's at. We can change those positions, the appearance. We can change the opacities just like we can with layers. And then we have what's called fills and borders. Fills are obviously the fill of the shape. So if I click this shape right here, it's got this kind of a warm yellow in it. And right here, it's got the warm yellow right here. So we can click that, fill those shapes with colors and gradients and different things. We'll basically be focused on colors and gradients in this. Push escape to get out of there. The escape. And then I have borders. If you want to put a border on a shape, it's going to put an outline on it. Okay. So now that shape I have has a border because I clicked it and then I can change that. It's got a black line. It's at one pixel. So if I change that to five, Push return. Now it's got five pixel border on it. Okay. We're just going to stop there. We're not going to get much into the, some of the other things, um, but it's all very similar to Photoshop. Like I said, if we can learn in Photoshop, we can learn most of our other programs. All right. So moving forward, let's go ahead and we're going to start a new program. Go ahead. And also Command Z undo is still available and is still will move you back in time. So think of that as your time machine. You can do no wrong because you can always command Z your way out of any problem. All right, so let's go ahead and go to file and we'll go to a new design here. 
you remember, I mentioned that this is a vector-based program. So you will see no resolution here, okay? Except for in special inches, most times we don't need a resolution. It's 10 by 10 inches, we're gonna go ahead and create that. Because vectors don't deal in resolution. It's a cool thing about a vector, it's like a mathematical equation on a shape, and no matter how big or small it gets, it's going to retain its uh, resolution. In other words, it's not made up of tiny squares in an inch of information, okay? So no matter how big or how small it is, it still is going to retain its resolution, okay? Um, we'll talk about that more in the future. All right, so we've got our main work area here. I'm going to move myself over just long. I go over here, maybe. So I'm going to go here. So first we're going to get our shape tool. We're going to make the first part of our burger. Okay. Um, click back and forth here. And you can see we got a burger. We got a bun. I got some toppings on there, some lettuce, tomato, and some pickles and everything. So we're going to go ahead and make that. Okay. Let's start with the burger here. So I'm going to go back over here to untitled number one. I'm going to make a burger. I'm going to get a shape. Obviously, you're going to get a rectangle shape here. And I'm just going to draw out a rectangle about as big as you want to make your burger. You see it's filled with gray. Okay. So we come over here and we look at that fill thing. We click fill, we click in that circle, and we can set the color. So I'm going to set my burger to a nice roasty, toasty, orangey brown here till right about there. You also have a color picker. So if there was a pick, uh, color in your image you wanted to use, you also have swatches you can use. I'm just going to use the color picker here. Remember, this is from most intense all the way down into neutral white, and then all the way from white all the way down to black and everything in between. So that is how the color picker works. Once you have the color that you want, you can push escape and that'll get out of that. All right, so now we're gonna adjust this. First thing we're gonna do is adjust those corners. You can see just like any other shape, if I click and drag on it, it's going to make that shape move around. I can resize it and pull it. I can go right here is our rotate and I can rotate it around. If you hold shift, it constrains it to increments. And it constrains the file size if we're going this way. But what we want to do is round off these corners, okay? Now, remember I have the direct selection tool, which our shortcut is V. We're going to get the direct selection tool, which is D. So we're going to get that, okay? And you'll notice I get some extra handles in here when I do that in the corner, these red handles. If I click on one of those handles and draw in, it's kind of hard to see probably. Make this a little bigger so you can see you'll see that when I click and drag, it rounds that off, okay? So that's rounding off my burger there where you've got it, and that takes it all four corners in unison together, okay? So we got that. All right, so let's go ahead and now let's make some lettuce, okay? To make the lettuce on here, I used a polygon tool, okay? Let's go ahead and drag out a polygon. So we're just going to make the polygon. We're just going to start with one right about there. I'm going to grab V, move it over here so you can see it. And I'm going to pick a nice green for my lettuce. Okay, so I pick a green there that I'm happy with. That's going to work just fine. And maybe a little lighter. Push escape. Gets out of there. All right. So now let's get that direct selection tool, D. And you see I've got all those points. I can move the points in and out like that. It makes a star shape. Over here in our properties here, you'll see how many points I've got. I've got six points. I can take that up or down. So like I say, you can, if I push eight, push return. Now I've got eight points to my polygon. Or you can use a slider. You also have the size we can do. Or you can just click and drag in your corners. But I want to take this and move it around, okay? And you'll see as I move it around, it kind of can make it like a saw blade shape there. If I can go back out and do the same thing, but they all work together in unison, okay? As long as this is a shape, it's going to continue to do that. No matter what I do, it's going to work in unison with all those shapes working together, okay? So if I want to affect just one of those points, I have to convert it to a path. Now, the difference between a path and a shape, a path is not constrained in the same way a shape is. How all the points are working together, this is going to unlock it so that I can move individual points. So to do that, we can go up here to our modify, or easiest way is just to right-click on it 
and you have the command shift P command, or you can just click command, command to path. Now that I converted to the path, I can move individual points around. I can take points and I can push them and I can stretch them. Save to the cloud. Cheeseburger online. Remember to save your work often in case you have a disaster. So after you get your shape wherever you want there, I'm going to go ahead and push V. I'm going to go ahead and scrunch this down. Okay. I'm going to stretch it out here. I'm just kind of making a random kind of organic shape here. So I got my lettuce there. I'm going to even make it a little thinner there. I'm going to put it up here. All right. Now, one thing that digital art does very well, it changes colors, it changes size, it rotates and moves things, and it duplicates things very easily, okay? The fastest and easiest way to duplicate things in Gravit or in Illustrator is to get your main move tool. So you're going to hit the letter V if you don't have that. You're going to click on select your image you want to duplicate, which is our piece of lettuce here. I'm going to hold down the Option key. Hold down Option, click and drag, and it automatically duplicates it one, two, and three. So I'm going to go ahead and change these to three different colors. I'm going to make them a little lighter each time. Again, I'm just going to go up closer towards my white there. Click the next one, and I'm going to take this one closer to the green over here. So I have three different shades of green for my lettuce. All right, now I've got that. I'm going to go ahead and place those on my burger however I'd like. Okay, now you'll see over here, each time we make a mark, a shape, it adds a new layer to our layers palette. So our bottom layer here is our burger. So again, we'll go ahead and change that to burger, just to have a little bit of organization. So we push burger. We've got these paths right here, and you'll see that's the one all the way on top. If I want this middle one here, Selected, you'll see it's selected. It's selected in the paths layer over here. Okay, but if I want to rearrange it, just like in Photoshop, I can just drag those layers above each other. Now you'll see that this layer is on top of the other two. And alternatively, if you want to move them back, you can drag them right back down. Okay, you can also right click and there's an arrange button. And you can bring forward or send back, or also you see the quick keys there, command and shift, and use your arrow keys up and down also arranges them. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and make uh, a tomato here, and we'll fill it with different things. So we're going to go up here and we we'll use a rectangle from a side view and just click out a slice of tomato about half the size of your burger there. We're going to fill this one this time instead of a color fill, let's fill it with a gradient. Okay, now gradients automatically go whatever your color was in your foreground color down to black. Okay, gradient right here. I've got my foreground color and then I click on this side of my gradient and I have the background color, which is, like I said, set to black right there. Okay, now, I don't want it all the way to black. I want to take it to a dark red. Get my red in the front here and I'm going to click a nice deep true red there. Maybe make it a little lighter. So I have a nice gradient, okay? You also have, have this gradient bar right here. It reflects wherever your gradient bar is in the gradient panel. So if I move this, you'll see my bar moves on my image over here. I can also change the direction of that gradient from top to bottom. Clicked away there accidentally. So I can change whether my gradient's going from top to bottom or left to right or right to left or however I would like it to be, okay? All right, so then once you've got that, you can hit escape. And have that. All right, so I've got a tomato there, okay? It looks a little rigid there. Let's bend this, okay? So again, this is a shape, right? So if we want to bend it, we got to unlock it to a path. So again, I'm going to make it a little thicker there. I'm going to right click. I'm going to convert that to a path converts to a path. All right, now we're going to get hit D to get our direct selection tool. Okay. Remember now we can move the individual corners. Okay. We can also move our actually straight lines here. So I'm going to curve this path. You see when I do that, it gives me two handles here, which I also can control and manipulate that way for more control. Okay. So I'm just going to 
add some bend to this and kind of torque my tomato a little bit here. So once I got it where I like it, I'm going to hit V. I'm going to place it down on my burger, and I think I want to turn it around the other way. So let's turn it around the other way. So once I kind of got it where I want, I can also fine tune that with my arrow keys up, down, left, and right. If you need to take those around. All right, let's go ahead and duplicate that. If you wanted to switch that gradient back to the other way, you could just go back over here to fill and you can just grab your gradient and you can just grab them and switch them to reflect the other way now that it's upside down. All right, so if I've got that and I wanna duplicate it again, I grab my V tool, grab V, pull down that option key and let's make one more tomato. We'll go ahead and rotate that guy here, place him on our burger. All right, super duper. All right, let's make ourselves a pickle. So this time I'm gonna get an ellipse and we're just going to click and drag out a pickle here. It's going to be kind of a shape there. Let's go ahead and grab our fill, pick a green, and I'm just going to fill this with a straight color. I'm going to pick a green for my pickle skin. And then I'm going to hold the option and duplicate that. And I'm going to make that fill a lighter green for my pickle inside like that. So now I'm going to move these two on top of each other. So I've kind of got a pickle slice there. Click away. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Now I want those two to work together because I want that to be one shape. So I'm going to take my V, hit V, main tool, our selection tool. I'm going to select both of those by dragging over top of them. You'll see now both ellipses are clicked. Now I can click and I can click group selection or command G. So now whenever I click away, I click those, they will always move together in unison, okay? If I duplicate them by holding Option and dragging over, it duplicates both of them because they are working in unison, okay? Let's go ahead and put our pickles on top here. Go ahead and rotate my pickle a little bit here. Like that. Rotate this guy a little bit here too. Fine tune that. And Z. Rotate that again there. And then we'll go down with the group. That group. That group down. All right, super. Last thing we're going to do, we're going to make a bun here. So I'm going to go out here, zoom out just a little bit here, and we're going to make a bun. We're going to make a bun by grabbing a rectangle, rectangle, and we're going to click and drag a nice size shape out here. Okay, we're going to go over here to fill, and I'm going to have a gradient. Again, I'm going to do a linear gradient. I want to pick you. I want you to pick a nice kind of golden brown to a deeper brown. So I'm going to go kind of a golden yellow here. About like this, and then on the other side, I'm going to click over, and we're going to get a nice deep kind of brown. So I've got kind of a nice golden brown that I'm looking at here. All right, so in this case, I want my gradient to go from top to bottom. So I'm going to go into my image. I'm going to grab my gradient bar. I'm going to rotate it around so that I've got a gradient that's moving from top to bottom how I like it. Okay, and then I'm going to go, and I'm going to get my direct selection tool by hitting D. I want to round off those corners just like I did for my burger. All right, so we got that. Everything's looking good. All right, now I want to cut this in half. To do that, I am going to get the knife tool up here. It's underneath the freehand shaping or knife tool if you don't see it. So I hit my knife tool and I'm going to click and I'm going to drag straight across my bun and it's going to cut it in half. Okay. Now if I hit V and get my direct selection tool and click off, you'll see that I now have two shapes. 
I have to make my burger a little darker here. It's looking like it's the same as the bun. There we go. Yes. Um, so then we've got our bun here. So let's go ahead and turn that into a path for a shape. So we're going to maybe it already converts it to a path once it cuts in half. So I did not know that. Something we all learn. All right. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to just kind of bulge up my path a little bit. And you can kind of move these around just to give your bun on top a little bit more shape, a little bit more character like that. Maybe take the bottom, bend it just a little bit, put our bun on top of our sandwich here, get our burger down at the bottom. Let's take that down just a little bit. It's a little thick. Cut down on them carbs. It's a big burger. Bring that in there like that. All right, so that gives us the basics. And from there, you can kind of see that I can add as many shapes and details. Like on my other one over here, I added some detail to my burger. You could add onions and lettuce and all kinds of other things. Those are the basics of playing around with shapes in Gravit. Okay, so that is going to end our lesson for today. Do good work, and I will see you in class.